Hey yo, welcome back. Happy Monday. Assalamu alaikum. All praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are going to continue the prophets and messengers of Allah series today. And we are here on episode 40. And this is going to be Solomon, peace be upon him, part two, uh, Harut, Harut and Marut. And this is the um, origins of black magic. I know that in the previous video about Solomon, peace be upon him, um, I had uh, quite a few questions about jinn and things of that nature. And I appreciate you guys so much for all of the comments and explanations that you left me. Um, I read every single one of them to my knowledge, and I can't wait uh, to start um, more of the Jin series and to learn more about this. Um, but before we get too too deep into that, um, we're going to finish the prophets and messengers of Allah. I feel like that is critical um, for like my base level knowledge. I really do. So we'll finish that first. But after that, we will absolutely get into uh, the Jin. And I believe there's a series also that you guys said um, is maybe Maybe the Army of Satan series by Merciful Servant, or that could have been the Jin series, but uh, no worries. I will go back and uh, check out the comments to make sure I get the right ones. Uh, but without further ado, let's go ahead and get this video started and see what we can learn today. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Brothers and sisters in Islam, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sulaiman was given a kingdom that no one in the past and no one in the future will ever have. And his kingdom, as I mentioned, my brothers and sisters, wasn't only the buildings and the countries and the state and the land. It wasn't only wealth. But the kingdom of Sulaiman, it's a miracle within itself. And Allah Azza had gave Sulaiman the armies of the jinn. They work under his commands. Whatever Sulaiman orders the jinn, they must do. There was a very interesting rumor that spread at the time that the jinn, they know the unseen. And Allah wanted to prove, forget about the unseen. They don't even know what is in front of them at times. How did Allah prove that? Sulaiman alayhi salam used to stand with his stick. They were frightened. And they used to get scared from Sulaiman. When Sulaiman used to order them to do something, they'll run to it. And when Sulaiman is present, they'll continue to work. And they used to build palaces for Sulaiman alayhi salam. And one day, when they were building a big massive palace for Sulaiman, Sulaiman was there present, watching them. And when they didn't see Sulaiman is there, they'll be so active non-stop. And there Sulaiman is watching, monitoring what the jinn are doing and building. And he had a stick. While he was on that stick, at that time Allah Azza wa took his soul. It's been narrated that Sulaiman alayhi salam passed away, leaning on that stick with his eyes open. Who's continuing to work? The jinn. And the jinn are working so hard. Sulaiman, when is he going to go? When is he going to give us a break? He's still watching us. A day passed, two days passed, a time passed, some, a long time passed. And all the jinn were working very, very hard in front of him, building something that he had wanted. When he passed away, Sulaiman, in that position with his stick, nothing led them to know that he died except the little ant that started eating the stick. The stick was wooden. The ant started eating the stick. When the ant began to eat the stick from the bottom, as it came up at a certain point after some time, the stick broke. When the stick broke, Sulaiman alayhi salam, who was balanced on it as a dead man, dropped. So Allah says, when he fell down, it was now known to everybody that had the jinn known the unseen, they would not have been punishing themselves by working so tirelessly. Subhanallah, the jinn, they do not know al waib the magicians and the fortune tellers, they depend on al jinn and they claim that jinn know the future. Okay, I'm just going to interrupt that for one second. Um, the ants that ate through the staff, um, is that by chance the same ant i believe um in the last video we did that uh saul solomon peace be upon him that saw his army uh coming I, I believe that that's what happened in the last time um i don't recall um if there that would be the same ant or not but i feel like that's an important detail and also as they were describing uh solomon peace be upon him leaning upon his cane um, while he is deceased, you know, it's uh, it was a very vivid image in my mind. It was very real, you know, it just um, 
I'm trying to think of the right word for that. I don't know. There's something about this video already that's setting a different tone. Um, it's very um, interesting. You know, that's that's the best word I can use to describe it this far. Okay, let me go back just a bit. Okay, let's go again. The jinn, they do not know al wife The magicians and the fortune tellers, they depend on al jinn, and they claim that jinn know the future. And since we have connection with the jinn, we can know and tell what will happen in the future. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if the jinn knew al waib if they knew the unseen, they wouldn't have remained in the punishment. The jinn, they do not have any knowledge whatsoever about the unseen, except what they steal from the conversation when they eavesdrop on the angels. That's the only information that they have. And they mix one piece of truth with 99 lies. That when he died, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it a great sign for humanity at large and for the jinn kind as well. That look, oh jinn, never mind, you, you, know the, you don't know the unseen, but worse than that, something right in front of you, the man is dead. You don't even know he's dead. In the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and until now, a lot of things have been attributed to Sayyidina Sulaiman alayhi wa which are untrue. One of which is magic. There are some of al Yahud, the Jews who attribute magic to Sayyidina Sulaiman. For example, they associate Sulaiman with someone called Asmodeus. And this Asmodeus was the chief of the devils. And they associate him with Sayyidina Sulaiman And they say that this devil, the chief of the devils, was the one who assisted Sulaiman in building and constructing. And he is the one who used to teach Sulaiman magic. And you would find that many cults and movements, they attach themselves to Sulaiman Many of these secret orders, they claim that they go back to Sulaiman As the most famous of them is the Masonic movement, al masoniya the Freemasons. You would find that the concept of the temple, the temple of Solomon, is something that is central or it is very influential on the ideology of the Freemasons. Also, movements like Kabbalah and some of these other mystical Jewish cults, they practice magic which they claim they have learned from Sulaiman. They claim that the lineage goes back to Sulaiman. Now there is some truth that there is magic. Okay, yeah, this is um, really, really getting my attention. Uh, this is fantastic, to be honest. And um, I do have a question uh, for you guys. Many people, they believe, um, I know that um, I think in Islam, the general consensus is that aliens are more likely to be jinn than aliens, or that in Islam, that may just be uh, what those things are, you know, when they have videos of uh, like just like speeding lights, like flashing by, um, you know, fighter jets that are going 800 or 1200 miles an hour, things like that. Um, but um, the general theory with people who are into aliens is that in the 1940s, the I believe it was the Roswell crash, is that's where the explosion of our technology came from. And um, I don't know, I just for some reason, is there a connection potentially? Uh, with that in Jin, um, that's something that I've been thinking about more and more ever since I we started to learn about the Jin more so in the last video is all the different possibilities. Like um, I think I said it in the last video and someone in the comments had also said it um, about the Jin uh, building the pyramids. And so I think uh, someone said that this was going to be great and that I was probably going to be really into it and want to learn more. And I think that that is the truth. Okay, let's go. It goes back to Suleiman. Now there is some truth that there is magic that goes back in lineage to some very early Jews. But it does not go back to Sayyidina Sulaiman It all goes back to where, where did the Jews learn this magic that some of which still exist until now. And it's very powerful magic. We are not talking about tricks where you hide a coin and you bring it out from somewhere or you bring something out of a hat. We are not talking about those tricks which they fool the kids with. We are talking about some serious magic that could do some serious harm. Where was that learned? In Babel. And how ancient is Babylon? It is said to be the most ancient city. There was no city before the city of Babylon to that level. The first real civilization was Babylon. So we are going back pre-Ibrahim. We're going back 
to the earliest of times, way before Musa, way before Sulaiman. So Allah is telling us when did magic begin. This is the story. وَمَا أُنزِلَ عَلَى الْمَلَكَيْنِ بِبَابِلَ هَارُوتَ وَمَارُوتَ And these Yehud are following what was revealed to the two angels of Babylon. These were called Harut and Marut. What was revealed to these two angels in Babel? Firstly, where is Babel? Where is Babylon? Iraq. Allah sent down two angels with the knowledge of how to control or access the jinn, which is magic. And the angels were sent to the city of Babylon. And the angels were allowed to teach anybody who wanted to study with them the quote-unquote art of magic. But the angels also claim with a big disclaimer. And that disclaimer was, the angels said to anybody who came to them, we are a test from Allah. So do not commit kufr by studying with us. Yet, if somebody insisted, they taught him. So the angels are a test and they say they're a test and they only teach somebody after they tell them, if you study this, you will become a kafir. But they were still there. So Allah says, the people studied from the two of them, that which would cause a husband and wife to fall apart, to have problems and whatnot. And they could never harm anybody unless Allah willed it. Magic is not more powerful than Allah. If Allah wants to, He can prevent it. They studied that which only harms them and there is no benefit. So magic has zero benefit. It's only evil. And, and the angels taught or told the men, whoever got this knowledge from them, they would have no share of the next world. And what an evil price they sold themselves for, if they only understood. And the angels claim with a disclaimer, if you study this, you're not a Muslim. And Allah has sent us to test you. But obviously the people of Babylon insisted and they studied it. So those who studied it became the first magicians of this humanity. And all magic that is existent today somehow goes back to Babylon. So if you read about this history, you find that Babylon is associated to it all. There is a lot of association with Babylon. The secret told us they came from Babylon rather than from Sayyidina Sulaiman Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And when there came to them a messenger from Allah, came to who? This is talking about Al-Yahud, the Jews. So they threw away the book of Allah when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa came because they don't want to follow him. When the book came with the Prophet they knew, they threw away this book behind their backs and they rejected the Prophet even though they knew that this is the Prophet. So they did not follow the book. What did they follow? Instead of following the book of Allah, they followed that which the shayateen recited during the time of Sulaiman. What is this recitation of shayateen? What were the shayateen reciting? The devils were teaching the people magic before the time of Sulaiman and during the kingdom of Sulaiman. Sulaiman came to know that the devils are teaching people magic. So he gathered all of their manuals and books. He took them away from the people because the people used to record what they were learned from the devils. Sulaiman took away all of those manuals and books and he made a law that whoever learns magic or practices magic or teaches magic will be executed. And he took away all of these books and manuals and he buried under his throne. He buried them and he made a law in his time that nobody should learn or teach or practice magic. This is from Shayati. He was so powerful we had made mention that he had the power to subject all the jinn kind of the time and he did it. And he used them in many different ways, some of them to build and to do so many other things. And Sulaiman alayhi salam, when he stood with his stick, they were frightened. They were scared of him. What did he do? He gathered all the books of magic. And where was the safest place to put all these books? Under his throne. So he placed them under his throne. He would be seated. Nobody touched these books and the magic stopped. Magic stopped. Now when that happened, there was a problem because they saw Sulaiman alayhi salam instruct the wind. It would move so fast 
a month's journey covered in the morning, another month's journey covered in the afternoon by the instruction of Sulaiman alayhi salatu wasalam. He got the palace of Bilqis within a split second to be shifted from Sheba all the way to where he was intact and he renovated it within split seconds and he built another palace next to it within split seconds amazing when Sulaiman passed away shaitan Iblis came to the people in the form of a human being and he said do you know where Sulaiman used to get his power from the devils are the ones who used to teach him and I will show you the proof go and dig under his throne and see what you will find they went to dig under the throne they saw the manuals and the books of magic. So they made a rumor and they said that this is how Suleiman used to control the jinn and this is how he achieved all of that power. It is through magic. And that's how they propagated this false rumor against Sayyidina Suleiman. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds to this claim and says, Wama kafara Suleiman. Suleiman has not committed kufur. Suleiman did not disbelieve. But the devils disbelieved, the shayateen disbelieved. They were the ones who were teaching people magic. This shows us that practicing magic and believing in it makes you a kafir. Because the jinns accused Suleiman of being a magician, not of being a kafir. And Allah defended Suleiman by saying, He didn't say Suleiman was not a magician. Rather, Allah said Suleiman did not commit kufr. Anyone who engages in magic or who seeks magical, meaning something magical from someone, they have lost their belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and entered into the fold of kufr. They've entered into the fold of disbelief. Who are the ones who are teaching magic? The devils. And what was revealed to the two angels in Babel? In Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rarely mentions places unless there is a reason for mentioning a locality or a place. In Babel, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the place over here in the ayah. The reason is because all of this magic or secret orders or distorted teachings came out of Babel. And we know that through history. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to record that in Quran so that we would learn where the source of all of this came from. Okay, I'm going to pause it real quick. I was hoping that they would touch a bit more on the magic, um, perhaps that they will before this video is over. Uh, but in the, the back of my mind, I was thinking, if the magic used, um, at least that they've described so far, is to disrupt um, the marriage or the, the love between a man and a woman, um, some people may think, well, that's really not, I mean, you know, it's bad, but that's not like a big thing. It's not like somebody shooting a fireball out of their hand or something like that. But when you think about the effects uh, of that, of uh, let's say that a man and a woman are married and they have a, a child or several children, and then that marriage dissolves and ends, the negative impacts that that has on those children and their futures. That doesn't mean that those children are doomed or anything, not even close. Um, but we oftentimes see, especially in the West and especially um, in poverty stricken areas in the United States, um, you know, regardless of religion, skin color, any of those things, uh, we see like in certain sectors, there's 74% uh, of that particular race is without a father in the home. Um, and we see that that is part of the consequences with the extreme uh, crime rates. You know, uh, uh, a young man and a young woman, they both need both their parents. That, that That is the optimal setting. You know, it doesn't always work out that way, but that would be optimal, uh, especially for a young man, because when a young man is raised by a woman, especially a woman that is struggling, um, we tend to see that pattern where the young man, um, you know, he grows up strong. He has high testosterone. He's a man. He's young and healthy, um, but he has not completely learned how to be stoic with his emotions you know I'm sure that if uh, um, someone more on the liberal side said that they would uh, think that I was being sexist but I, I strongly believe that a young man needs a father to teach him how to be a man and that one magic that one spell alone um, that can set off a chain reaction you know that affects hundreds of millions if not you know somewhere in the billions of people in an extremely negative manner so um, I, I would say that that is not to be taken lightly that particular magic because we see the effects of that that leads to uh, murder, abortion, uh, suicide, 
crime, theft, like just uh, no character, like no honor, all of those things. It, it can lead to those. It doesn't always, thank God, but it absolutely can. So I just wanted to put emphasis on that, that that is serious and that is extremely harmful. Okay, let's go. So that we would learn where the source of all of this came from. It came from Babel because without reading Quran, by just reading the history and books that deal with this, you would be able to see this association with Babel. So when you read this in Quran, it's an amazing thing to see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala typed this into Babel. And that then gives us the complete picture of what happened. This knowledge was learned by a faction of Al-Yahud, the Jews. And it has been inherited from generation to generation through secret orders. And part of that magic still exists until now. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us one effect of such brand or type of magic. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says they learn from these angels what could cause separation between man and his wife. It's a magic spell that is cast on the husband or the wife and it would cause hatred in the heart of the husband or the wife and it would make it unbearable and eventually it would cause divorce, separation. It is true that this exists but also it is true that many people take it out of context and whenever there is a problem between husband and wife they hang it on magic. They said there is magic between them and that's not true. Sometimes it's magic, sometimes it's incompatibility of two persons. But this type of magic is not only limited to putting these differences between husband and wife. It could cause some other harm and the way is done they have to have a part of your body such as hair, nail, with the assistance of the jinn would wrap it in what is called ukda and they would wrap it with that part of your body in it and they would throw it somewhere and that is what would cause this problem or magic to take effect. You know, for some people, they may think that that sounds primitive or silly or cliche, but when you really think about it, um, if we look at, say, for example, a, a hair follicle test and it has all of your DNA um, and they can tell what drugs are in your system, all of that from a single piece of hair, um, and it wouldn't shock me if that was also available through a fingernail. We do know that fingernails, I believe, they carry DNA and all kinds of you know evidences of our body. Um, and I did like that he made the distinction that just because a man and a woman end up getting a divorce, it doesn't necessarily mean that there's magic involved. They could simply be incompatible. Um, and um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that might have been his, or it is, everything's his will. So it may, it was his, his will for them to not be together. And perhaps because of that, they both had better lives and better journeys. And so do their children. You know, we just don't always know how these things play out. Okay, let's go. And that is what would cause this problem or magic to take effect. The magician would think that by learning this knowledge, they could benefit. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, magic is purely harm and there is no benefit in it whatsoever. The magicians go through, when they follow this path, you would be amazed. Don't think that the devils teach them this knowledge for free. They pay for it and they pay for it in the worst ways. The rituals the magicians go through before they are incepted in the ranks of the magicians, it is thing that would make the hair on your body stand. They would make them drink the blood of menstrual. They would make them eat frogs and snakes and insects. They would make them write ayat of Quran with blood and step over it. They would make them make istinja with pages of Quran. They would make them make sujood to the devils. They would make them make sujood to idols. These are the rituals that the magicians have to go through before they get the assistance of the jinn. They do not offer their services for free. Jinn do not offer their services for free. The right way to heal is by reading Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in Quran is healing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says, and indeed they knew that the bios of it magic would have no share in the hereafter and how bad indeed was that for which they sold their own selves. Because the magician sells himself, if they but knew, and if they had believed and guarded themselves from evil and kept their duty to Allah, 
far better would have been the reward from their lord if they but knew allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has fulfilled this dua when he said oh allah give me a kingdom that will occur to nobody else after me allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him a unique kingdom he had also the authority to tie up these jinn in such a way that they would be slave for him doing whatever he wants all tied up in a line in a uniform fashion he was able to jail them to imprison them to punish them to use them in whatever way he wished any one of these jinn who would go against the orders of sulaiman will be punished so as soon as sulaiman alayhi salam passed away they went to their normal jobs of the pre sulaimani kura and that is to deviate people this is the story of sayyidina sulaiman alayhi salam we want to talk about a man the allah azza wa jal not only that he mentioned the quran kareem but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala named a full surah after his name and that surah luqman and the man that we want to talk about is luqman al hakim inshallah we have an appointment with that until we meet again wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina muhammad subhanallahi wa bihamdihi subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk Wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that was, that was fantastic. And, um, I, I love it because I don't know, I just, I guess to a degree, I wasn't expecting that level of detail. Um, and then I know you guys had told me that there's like, to there's whole series about Jen. Um, there's multiple people. Uh, there was a, a gentleman, I believe from the United Kingdom named Tim, something that, um, y'all said was good. And that I think it was the merciful servant, uh, one of those YouTube channels that has a great series as well. Yeah. I can't wait to check that out. It's, um, it's like, what's the word? Um, I don't know, not enchanting. I don't want to use words like that, especially in this context, but I think you guys know what I mean. It's just like kind of a shock to my system. Um, but it feels like it feels like it's almost opening a doorway for me to understand certain things about the world. Um, so for example, if you look at a lot of the high profile celebrities in the United States and well, basically all Western countries, but specifically the United States, um, you see that kind of like a stereotypical of what you would think Satanism is. You see them um, participating in that. I believe it was the actress uh, Megan Fox and the the rap artist Machine Gun Kelly that they were like, drinking each other's blood as part of their romance. Um, you'll see like uh, Lady Gaga and other individuals in that industry. Like they, they do like the devil horn sign to each other when they see each other. Um, and a lot of these people, they're involved with that woman. Um, I don't know her name, Mariana Brovovich or something. I apologize if that's not it, especially if it's the wrong person, uh, but it's into the spirit cooking. And that's kind of the rumor is of like blood drinking and cannibalism and things of that nature. And many of the people listed in the music artist, uh, uh, P Diddy or Sean Puffy Combs, P Diddy Combs, whatever they call them. Um, a lot of those same individuals were at his parties and we start to see that, um, you know, hey, until proven, you know, guilty in court and we know all the facts, I don't want to slander people or talk down on them um, but it just looks highly suspect and especially when we see the satanic patterns and we see uh, the devil horns things and there's always themes of being covered in blood in their videos and gore and just you know sick things like that things that are very anti Allah you know um, so but I feel that the more I learn about this I think that many aspects of our history are gonna begin to make more sense to me um, and also the Freemason thing that really caught my attention. And um, I don't know, I just, I feel pieces of information coming together, you know, and the more that we do these videos and the more I learn, I, I don't like Islam is huge, you know, I mean, I know Islam, that means submission to God, right? But in this context, I just mean all of the information, you know, about um, the Quran, like all of the history, all of the facts, the scientific data that supports all of these things, the miracles in the Quran, you know, like, um, like the word day being in there 365 times is the odds of that happening on accident in my opinion are extremely low extremely low and when we look back how long ago that was you know I mean, people have always been intelligent you know i mean that that's the way that allah made us you know but i don't know i just i feel these pieces coming together i feel like the more that i watch these videos and think about them and discuss them and learn from you guys that just this i don't know 
like the, the the keys to the universe. It's like they begin in the Quran. You know what I mean? I mean, I I don't know. It just I don't know. Sometimes though, I get lost in my own brain, and I'm like, wait, what does that mean? Like, what? We got to go back and circle back and look at this and. But I don't know. We're just going to keep going. And um, my interest just gets <laughs> it gets greater and greater, you know, to the point where there's some days where it's like all I'm thinking about, you know, I'm trying to focus at work, but I just want to like learn more. So um, we will be back soon. I can't wait to come back. Um, the presidential election in the United States is tomorrow. Kamala Harris versus Donald Trump. Uh, I believe Jill Stein is also running, but um, and I don't say this to upset anyone, but realistically, um, she doesn't have the support, I don't believe, um, to be considered a threat to either Donald Trump or to uh, Kamala Harris. Um, I believe one of them will be the next president. Um, and after that, we'll see what happens. You know, my, my biggest hope is that um, regardless of what happens tomorrow or in the following days when they finish counting the votes, that there's just not violence in the streets. And I hope that whoever wins <clears throat> stops the war in Ukraine, um, stops the killing in Palestine. That's got to stop. Um, yeah, that's my biggest hope. So we'll see what happens. You know, I feel a little bit edgy, not too bad, but you know, I live here, so it is important on who wins and what their next move is. So we'll see. Um, yeah, I will be back as soon as I can. Um, if maybe even tomorrow night, I don't know, I'm going to be watching a lot of news coverage because depending on who wins it, you know, it can have a, a gigantic effect on like my entire life, you know, as far as what laws will be passed. Are we going to have more taxes, higher interest rates? You know, Trump says he's going to cut taxes and cut taxes on overtime. That would affect all of the employees that I work with, you know, so, oh, I don't know. It's just kind of a little stressful to think about, but it'll be fine. Um, thanks, guys, for, for watching and uh, checking out the video again. And I can't tell you how grateful I am for all of the comments that you guys leave. You know, some of those are paragraphs and I read every single one of those. I promise you I do. Sometimes it takes me a few days to get to them, but I promise you if you see that I've put uh, my little heart thing uh, on, on your comment, then I read the entire comment all the way through. Um, I do try to respond um, to some of them, but unfortunately I'm still in a position where my time is a bit limited, but I just wanted you guys to know that I do care and I do appreciate it and I do learn from those. So thank you for that. Um, uh, but yeah, um, I do have a big day ahead of me tomorrow, so I've got to get out of here. Thanks again, guys. I will see y'all real soon.